All right, guys, it is cold, it is frosty, but the sun's out. We got a brand new bucket to try out. Got the winter hat on. It's gonna be a good day. Let's get started. All right, we got the old uh, 120 woke up this morning. This thing's been, uh, it's been job hopping, man. Yes, it has. It's like everything is right with the world again. I'm back running the 120, so. You just had to say everything's right with the world again, didn't you? <laughs> Jeez. Hey, I started this video Mike. off. I started this video off saying it's going to be a good day. Now, it's going to be a good day. It's a mental thing. So. Okay. We got our brand new bucket from Jason and the crew. SRS attachments. Check out that absolute beauty. That is awesome. I have to say, the 120 makes that bucket look good. Is there still some meat up there on that knuckle? I don't want to talk about my elbow. <laughs> it's, finally, it's finally healed back up. We're going strong. So, all right. So, first thing we got to do, I sent Jason a whole lot of measurements. So, first thing we got to do is make sure it hooks into the coupler. Yeah. And once it hooks into the coupler, if we did off our math right, whenever that thumb comes down, it should go in between the teeth. right in between every tooth. This thumb is a little bit goofy because it's not near as tall as the other one. All the other buckets I tried to buy, the thumb went inside the bucket. We do not want that to happen. So, not gonna happen. Jason nope. is has done it correctly. <clears throat> Let's see how it couples up. That went well. Look at that. Looks, Look at that. looks like the coupling Look part worked well. right in there perfectly just barely goes under the bucket it was like it was made to go on this machine what's jason's last name i don't know jason awesome let's just call him jason awesome jason awesome did an awesome job srs attachments say that again srs attachments perfect now we gotta get it dirty now we gotta make her dirty all right, guys, so the septic system we're going to put in today would probably be what most people would consider to be a little bit more of a conventional system. We're actually going to use the ARC 36 chambers. These are low profile. The limiting layer you hear us talk about in all the other ones is actually quite a bit lower here. We can dig up to 24 inches deep. So with the 7 inch profile chamber, we can still get 12 inches of cover over them so we can actually sink them in the ground and not use the Presby sand line system. So starting off here today, Matt has got, we got two runs of 26 chambers, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, we got our flag laid out here. I know it's going to be hard to see, but we got orange marks down through there. It kind of squiggles around a little bit and ends up down there. Why it squiggles around is it has to end up on contour. We want to make sure it maintains depth all the way down through there. So we are going, what, 24 inches. Four inches deep? Yep. And uh, away we go, I believe. Waiting on you. <sighs> Hope the heat works in that track. <laughs> That's working, but I need more. All right, guys, here we go. Very first scoop of dirt with a brand new bucket. It's so pretty, I even hate to get it dirty. We got just a little bit of slop in it. We got a, I need to get some shims in that bucket pan up there, but we'll get that, we'll get that figured out soon enough. But it's not gonna stop me from getting this real thing. Now, one thing I don't have, where the blade on the 120 would be handy. We're on a little bit of a hillside here, so I kind of got to... It's dirty now! I know, it's so sad! I kind of got to get my... Uh, I kind of got to get myself leveled up using the spools out of my trench. So, I'm going to... Once I get going here, it'll work out pretty good. I kind of got to get myself going. Basically, I'm taking these behind me, and I'm throwing them down for my downhill travel. My downhill track will run. That should kind of level me up, but as I get going down through there, I should just be able to keep leapfrogging it behind me. So I think one more time I'll probably, one more time I'll probably get it. A little bit worried about this dirt being too wet for what we're doing today, but I think we're going to be just fine. Man, look at that thing. It just digs like butter. Yeah. I don't know what it's like having new teeth on something. This might be the first time in my life I've ever been able to have been the first person to take a scoop of dirt with a new buggy. I'm the master of used and rebuilt. Alright, there we go. There we go. Got ourselves leveled up now. We should be, should be good to roll. Should be good to roll. Look at that. Man, that's nice. That is nice. 
ground is actually pretty hard. That sucker slices through it like better than butter. Look at that. Shoo, that's nice. All right, guys, we got our system going here. We just kind of put the first couple chambers in there, making sure everything was going to fit and lay good. Those things lay down in there. They kind of interlock on the end. We basically keep this on grade with just a slight slope heading that way. It'll be 26 of them in this ditch. Our bucket works perfect. It's just the right size for these chambers. No reason why we keep a three foot bucket around. So we're going to keep on digging out through there. We got, what's 26 times five? It's 100 and something, 115 feet. Six and five is three. 130 feet, right? 130 feet. I was only off of 15. That's not bad. <laughs> that's good. That's good math for being cold, bud. You want me to confirm it? No, that's how far we gotta go. I'm gonna confirm it. Ha! I don't think it's exactly five feet either. My math was spot on. <laughs> that's the only reason why I did it, by the way. I'm glad one of us is right. All right, back to digging. All right, guys, there it is. We got the first run of chambers in there. That's 130 feet. Everything locked in on gray, dug out nice. New bucket's working awesome. Jump down here, I don't know if you guys can see. It's not perfectly straight, and it's, uh, it's kind of that way by design. That's uh, what we were talking about earlier when we say follow the contour. We're kind of following the contour of the hill. But uh, Matt's up there getting the second run. We got to put a second run in up there above it. Uh, that one there will be uh, the it'll be the same. They got to be equal roll lengths. Now, whenever I say on contour, he's basically setting the laser on grade right there, and he goes across the hill and adjusts up and down to where he stays on grade for 130 feet. So this here lays pretty good. Sometimes you get these things on a hill and they'll they'll snake really big. This one here is uh, this one here is laying out pretty smooth. Bucket is absolutely awesome. We got one small issue. I wouldn't even call it an issue. This pin diameter size here is the uh wrong size i don't know if you guys can see that but we got a little bit of a little bit of a floppy bucket scenario going on there but we'll get that fixed pretty easy probably just uh maybe rework this bush or boss on one side i don't know if there's enough room i can get a sleeve over or not but uh <laughs> i am not complaining by no means that thing is awesome digs awesome matches up with my thumb does fit on the coupler i have no complaints whatsoever so anyways back to digging we go this run of chambers here is pretty much a duplicate of the one down below the only difference is we got to make sure we maintain seven and a half feet center to center between them which we got uh we got close to 10 feet so we shouldn't shouldn't be anywhere messing with that that particular specification, but pretty much the same old song and dance. Put a little bit of dirt back here and level myself up and hold down our very way we go. Right there to the center is eight feet, so you're over eight feet center to center. Over eight feet center to center. Yep. Okay. 
I think this is the closest they are together, so I think Seven you're right. And a half. What's that? Seven and a half is the minimum. Yeah. Let me dig it out and on back, then ever Robbie starts his chambers, have him start like oh, five feet in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> keeps twitching like it's getting ready to break or Get something. Get your beard all fixed for everybody. Well now I got Robbie's good side. <laughs> hey it's a good thing to patch this. Oh my goodness. I heard my name. <laughs> all right guys we got there's the last chamber going in last chamber going down buckets working absolutely awesome I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go up there by the house and uh, we they got a sewer line stubbed out so we're gonna find the elevation of that so Matt can start working on the tank placement and then from there we will probably put the trenching bucket on and uh, start it on the perimeter drain so let's scoot on up there and see what we got all right, if you guys can see right there, that is the sewer tap coming out of the building right there. They said they got about a four foot piece of pipe on it, so we're gonna dig down, try to find it, so we know what the elevation is, so we can work our way back and find the tank. So, here we go. into a fun little adventure. I guess they got a bunch of rock fill underneath this slab out here. That rock fill is all full of water and there's no drain on it. So as we're digging this sewer line out of here, we are fighting all the water coming out from underneath the building. But we finally got her bailed out. Matt's getting a 45 on it. The plan is, is to come out 45 and then we're gonna go this way here. So kind of glad I'm not the one down there in the mud, but don't tell Matt that. But it is, it is cold and it is muddy and it is nasty and it's, it's all the all the above. So here's the plan, guys. We're trying to stay up out of the water. We got the first section of pipe in there. That's actual schedule 40. I'm gonna take some of this dirt, put it back down there, and try to build a dam to keep that water on that side of the pipe. So hopefully the rest of this trench will stay dry. Especially when we get down here to the tank hole, because we don't want our we don't want our tank floating right off the bat. So let's see if we can stop it. Good news guys, I got my dam in up there. It worked great. We now have a dry hole down here. I promise I will show you that in a minute, but we have a septic tank delivery. It's gonna be here any second. And we do not have a hole for it. So I'm going to thrash here for a second, try to beat the delivery truck and get us some 
hold up for a septic real quick, and then I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of a look, see what we got up there. Oh boy, that's rough. Hopefully we get there pretty quick. What well, we got this pass. I don't see how good. All right guys, what's the old saying? Just in the nick of time, we just finished up the hole down there. Our septic tank's back down the driveway, but this is what we did up here. This is the dam we put in. Get all the water on this side of our plug, which gives us a dry hole. Going this way, Matt. Mr. Matt, he uh, forgot a connector there. But, go on down. We got our septic tank hole dug here. Matt's double checking our Elevation and our sizes there Should fit like a glove. I dug it Top 13 your bottom's 11. We're gonna blame it on the rock Yeah. <laughs> it may be a little bit interesting getting this septic tank truck up here. We'll see how that goes I guess Yep. But, all right set the tank is next on list Well, right on cue, we have us a septic tank. And so far we don't have a stuck truck, so that's always nice. He's way too far downhill, isn't he? Let Matt line the truck up. You're like a half hole off. Why weren't you standing over there? I was standing over there. I thought you had it under control. I was standing right here and then I moved and I shouldn't have moved. You got it? Take two. Oh, I'm just holding the camera. I'm not in charge of anything. He's looking pretty good now, though. Yeah, he can probably go that way a little bit. There you go. That'll work. That'll work. She's coming off and going down. Now we just gotta hope Matt's got the depth of the hole right. Those trucks are so simple, but yet so effective. Floating tank. Much straight down there, isn't it, Matt? Yep. <laughs> well, it fits in the hole. That's the first obstacle. 
Man, who dug that hole? I almost go. Quarter that way. I almost go as far as call him Mr. Perfect. That's pretty close. Quarter that way. That's pretty close. Their, their lids off. They poured their lid off. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, buddy. That's it. I think our elevation looks pretty good too, don't it? Well, about an inch low. Put the shovels far. I just want to make sure your head doesn't get any bigger than it already is. I I'd call that perfect because I purposely dug it an inch high so we can save oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Uh -huh. Check that out, I already got the paint wore off the old girl. Man, oh man, that bucket, I'm in love with it. That bucket works, works awesome. We gotta change the pin diameter size a little bit. They're just a little off, and I uh, got a little bit of a little bit of slop in it, but that's gonna be a pretty easy adjustment. The main thing is, all the geometry and everything. Oh, I love it, those guys knocking down the park. Awesome, awesome job. So, we're gonna go from the pretty new thing to the old ugly thing I built. You guys seen this on the channel a lot. It's the, uh, I call it a trenching knife. I do not use it like a bucket. I use it like a knife. Just kind of pull stuff out of there. I actually built this bucket, I don't know, probably six, seven years ago. It's hard telling how many miles of trench this thing has dug, but it works really good. It is actually 60 inches tall. It's about, uh, I don't know, 20 inches up here, about a foot down there, and the trench width on, width on this one is actually 10 inches. Now, I've had several people ask me where I bought that thing at. Actually, I didn't buy it, I just said I, I built it. But uh, Jason from SRS Attachments told me if there's enough of you guys interested in one of these, he may do a run and build some of those. That's one thing really cool about those guys. If you check out their Facebook page or their website, as they do a lot of uh, custom build stuff, which is exactly what that there is. So uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in something like that, comment down below. Maybe I'll get you hooked up with Jason. I don't know if he's gonna build one or two, but of course there's several of you that are interested. He might make a run of them. So let's, uh, let's put this girl in the dirt. I'll show you what she does.
there it is guys it just makes a very nice little simple quick easy dirty trench however you want to say it if i was going to do it all over again i would probably take the teeth off or have the teeth removable it would be nice if you're trying to run grade like for field tile or sewer line it'd be nice to be able to clean up the bottom of that those teeth leave it a little bit rough but other than that it is one handy tool out of all the homemade attachments i've made that's probably the one that gets used the most it's definitely got the most uh most miles on it so what we got to do here just to explain is we basically got to put in what the state calls an interceptor drain so we got to dig a trench that is deeper than the bottom of that and catch any groundwater intercept it and funnel it on around the hill so it protects our bed there so you guys see the plan i'm gonna go to digging check back with you guys in a minute Check out that awesome trench down there. I'll show you guys, this right here is why we like the trenching bucket, or why I think the trenching bucket works so good for our area. You just never know when you're gonna hit a bunch of random rock. A little bit of a pain in the butt digging it through with the trenching bucket, but there is no way you're getting through that with the trencher, unless you've got actual rock teeth on it, and then we'd probably still be here, so. But uh, we got out of the rock, and look at that, man. Just a nice little slice down through there. So next on the list, the next thing we gotta do is that has to be filled with, uh, some kind of aggregate rock, sand, uh, whatever your choice is. Sand is actually not the cheapest choice, but it's what we had available to us. So uh, I'm gonna hop in the skid steer here real quick and get that back filled with sand while we are waiting on the inspector to show up to sign off on it. And then uh, we gotta get the tank hooked into the D-box, the D-box hooked into the lines, and then we're getting there. So, all right, let's throw some sand in the trench. Guys, while we were waiting on the health inspector to show up, I thought I'd throw the drone in the air a little bit and get some cool shots of the septic system and more importantly, this uh, this timber frame structure that I got going here. It is pretty doggone cool. So it's gonna be uh, be an awesome little place when they're all done. But as you guys, if you guys seen on the flight in, we got the uh, chambers in, we got the uh, trench in, we got the tank in. We still do need to get the D box and the pipe set up, but uh, everything's coming together pretty nice. And uh, well, we gotta get some cool shots of the 120. We can't leave it out of the picture, but everything's coming together pretty good. It is cold, but the sun's out. Ground conditions are still pretty good. So hopefully we'll get a clean inspection here in a little bit and get this job wrapped up. All right, guys, health inspector just left. We passed inspection. We did have a pretty lengthy conversation about whether or not the dirt was too wet or not. And we did have concerns about that, but after looking it over, showing her a few examples of what we got, she ended up being pretty comfortable with it. And this uh, system is actually a little bit oversized for what we're trying to do. So we're right at this point, we're getting late in the day trying to get her covered up. We've got the D-box set. I've got the trench dug up to the tank. Matt and Robbie are running the, uh, running the pipe up there for that. While they're doing that, I'm gonna jump over and start backfilling and start getting this covered up. And then, uh, yeah, we'll wrap her up. Dirt settled out, and then you end up with the, the 
you end up with a divot there when it settles out and that divot ends up holding water that's like the last thing you want is these trenches holding water up here on top because well that's the whole purpose of it is to get rid of water not hold water so what we found back fill them up leave them bridged up a little bit and just have to come back in a later day it's always nice to get it done while you're here but it's just kind of got to come back in a later day and uh, kind of get it all polished up and ready to go. Fortunately, this one here is in a pasture, so it's not going to hurt a whole lot if it uh, stays a little bit rough in the winter. But I'm going to work my way down through here on this one, then I'll come back and get the other one here in a minute. I should be able to, uh, should be able to straddle that, straddle this one and reach and pull back that other one pretty easy. At least that's my plan, so... Yeah, just like that. Just a nice little neat ridge right there on top. We'll let her naturally settle out with the rains and the thunderstorms this winter. And then uh, we'll come back in the spring. Come back in the spring, run the power rack down the ridge and kind of crown it off. And it'll be like nothing ever happened. Be good as me. Matt never finished up the connection to the tank. I'm going to get this backfilled real quick. We'll go check on everything they done. Go check on everything they done, make sure they did it right. That's about going to be the end of it. Today is, what is today? December 15th. We were lucky, 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 lucky ground conditions let this hit this uh, septic snuck in here at the end of this year. But there is no doubt this will be the end of the 2020 septic season. This is the last one right here. We got all of them done we were supposed to, except for one. There's one septic we didn't get to, but it's not really all that crucial. It's one that could wait. It was uh, just for a rental cabin, so pretty close to accomplishing our goal for the year. All right, guys, check that out. We got her all backfilled. That's how I was talking about. Just going to kind of leave it ridged up there a little bit. We got to finish this. Up. Matt's got his D-box plumbed. We got the inlet coming in there. We got the two outlets. We did make sure this pipe and that pipe are the same elevation because you want them to be fed equally. And then uh, we got this pipe is ran on up to the tank. Beautiful job there. Matt missed this call and it should have been a plumber. Get up here to the tank. One thing that's different is since this is a chamber system, not a Presby, they require us to have a filter, outlet filter. So that goes right in there like so. Beautiful job. And then the inlet side gets what they call a diffuser on it, which is that little guy right there. It basically lets the solids float on top and everything else go underneath. But we got to put the riser on it and finish filling her up. Did you bring the torch? You done yet? Did you bring the torch? It's cold. They have to uh, throw it in the floorboard of the truck real quick. Oh, well, I got a better idea. How about in the track though, where it's been <laughs> warm all day? My feet are warm. My head's a little cold. My feet's warm. <laughs> all right guys this is how we're going to finish up the end of the day got everything pretty much smoothed up right there tank covered up everything backfilled that all looking pretty good this is how we're going to leave this down here this is kind of what i was talking about i didn't want to i didn't want to track on that to compact it so we just kind of left it humped up a little bit maybe 18 20 inches that'll settle down a little bit and after it does we'll come back through there with the ruckus wreck and just kind of uh polish that off so Real quick before we, before we wrap this one up, I just want to say a huge thanks to Jason and the team, SRS Attachments, that new bucket is absolutely awesome. Fits like a glove. We just got a little tweak we got to do on the pin diameter up there in the bucket. That's not going to be a big deal at all. But one of the, one of the coolest parts about this, you know, uh, Jason contacted me and said, hey man, I think we can help you out with the bucket. And I said, awesome. And uh, I said, what do uh, what we need to do for you? What, we need, what do we need to do in return? And his answer just, uh, I thought his answer was really cool. He said, me and my son like watching Dirt Perfect in the evening. I just think it'd be really cool to see my bucket on your channel. So mission accomplished. This is just one, I'm sure, of many videos. So you guys down in the comments, give a huge thanks to Jason. Say hi to his son because uh, that bucket's awesome. We love it. And uh, you guys, the rest of us, me, we're all going to be seeing a lot more of it. But uh, I'm cold. It's been a long day. I think I forgot to eat lunch because I'm kind of hungry. So we're going to wrap this one up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, guys, and we shall catch you on the next one.